this is Eddie from AppShake here to help you build an app for free without using code. Now before we get started, I want to explain three common types of app builders. We have code-driven platforms. Some of them are more complex than others, but all rely on foundational code. We also have drag-and-drop type builders, which are simply platforms that allow small businesses to drag and drop a couple pieces of parts to create a working app for a grocery store or a barber, things like that. And we also have AppSheet, which is what we call a data-driven platform. So how AppSheet works is it connects to your data to allow you to customize your app to then deploy your app to your users. So we can use data sources like Google Sheets and Forms, Excel, Office 365, Dropbox, and OneDrive, Salesforce, Smartsheet, and SQL, and more. Now there are a couple reasons why AppSheet's data-driven model might be right for you. The first is that if you're dealing with larger data sets, AppSheet allows you to have the functionality of a cloud-based spreadsheet or database while still having the portability of the cloud. AppSheet's also platform agnostic, which means that you can iterate data from any number of sources and connect it through the same platform onto a single or multiple apps. And because all the data is backed up onto your pre-existing cloud, there are no data silos with AppSheet. Currently, the AppSheet platform is used by the Fortune 500 manufacturers like Husqvarna, Now we can also head over to our UX tab, our UX tab. 
up, we can see that we have these various views. We can choose to sort them in different ways. We can change this from a deck view to a table view if we want to see all data at once. But I actually prefer the deck view because we get the images. If you're using other data types, a map or a chart or even a calendar might be helpful, but for now, a deck view is going to be what's most helpful for us. We can also sort our data and group our data. And let's go ahead and group our data by category. Now we can see that we have groceries, personal hygiene, and pharmacy separate. Let's also go ahead and we can change our second view over here. And let's make it a form view. Now what this does is it gives us the capacity to add any new stock in the unit however you want. And let's go ahead and rename our form view new SKU for stock in the unit. We could also go ahead and add a simple image for this uh, soccer ball. Now you see we have a simple app with two views. We could have up to five views along the bottom, and we could also create a set of views to put in the menu section. So for now, we'll keep two views since this is a really simple app, but bear in mind if you're using a data source with a lot more data, or you're using multiple data sources, or you're trying to make use of various complex features of functionality, you will definitely want to use more than two views. We can also add our own custom branding in the brand section. We could create formatting rules. For instance, whenever availability is at zero, we might highlight that in red to make us extra aware. In the behavior section, we can also add a new action. We'll say add order from data. And we can say for our what's available, plus plus the value of the column quantity plus the value of the column And save that. And what this is essentially saying that for our avocados, which have 70 available, whenever we hit that action order quantity, it will add 50 to it. So if we are in the app and we're on the go, we can go ahead and hit add order quantity, and that will be reflected to our inventory. We can also create simple workflows. For instance, if we wanted a workflow for a low inventory order, we can do so. We can say when there is any change, From here, let's take a look at our security tab. We can see that we have a required sign-in through Google. We could also change this to be a public app or we could sign in through other authentication providers. We also have an intelligence tab where we can have a smart assistant which allows us to use voice commands on the go. And so once we're done customizing our app, we can head over to deployment, going to not deployed, and this will automatically run our deployment check and it says we're good to go despite a few warnings about not having a description and we will go ahead and move our app to a deployed state. And once our app is now deployed, we can head over to our email and we will see that here is our grocery inventory app. If this is on our phone, we can go ahead and install it. It would show up as a app icon or tablet. But for now, let's take a look at the browser view. You can see that we have a functioning app in our desktop browser. And if we wanted to share this app, we'd go ahead and go to share app and we could find all our coworkers, or we could simply use an entire app domain. So that in just a couple of minutes is how you build an app with the AppSheet platform. Keep in mind that we have just barely scratched the surface of all the features and functionalities of what this platform is capable of. Feel free to check out our channel for more examples of the kinds of things you can do, or you can head over to sample apps and discover all kinds of examples of existing apps sorted by industry, function, and feature set. So thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you in our YouTube comments section or over at community.appsheet.com.